Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. And as much as I love summer, I am thinking fall. So I painted up these really teeny tiny little pumpkins. They were so much fun. And I know I've posted some little videos here of the tiny, tiny canvases I painted. Hi, Noelle. So I thought I would pop on if you would want to see how I painted these. They're pretty easy. I buy the little packages um, of mini canvases at Michael's. They come in little three inch squares and they come in black. Hey, Janet. Um, and they come with the, you know, you can buy a separate pack of these little easels, which they can sit on and they are adorable and they're pretty quick and easy to paint. Um, so this is my first little fall project. Good morning, Lucille. Thanks for watching. I'm going to turn my camera down and show you how quickly I painted these this morning and how much fun they are. You can mix them up. You could paint all color backgrounds, all color pumpkins. I just thought I'm still in my turquoise phase. Hi, Karen. So let me turn this down and, um, so you can actually see what I am doing. Hang on, I'm gonna have to turn you down and around. So hold on. And there we go. Let me get it so you can see me. Um, I want you to see all the paint and everything too. So let's see, that looks pretty good. If you have any questions or anything, I am in the comments here too. So if you have any questions as I go about anything I do, let me know. Hang on. We'll get it. We'll get it straightened out there so you can see. Hang on. There we go. Oh, you don't need to see me, but see how tiny they are. They're pretty cute. And there, I just want to make sure you can see them. I only have a few brushes. I have a random assortment of colors, which I'll show you as we go along. Some of these little canvases in the packs come in the black. So I buy some of the black ones and then I have the white ones. And so how I started them was, I just painted one in turquoise and I painted one in ivory and I didn't even have to paint the black canvas. That one's, that's the way it came. So I just started these so you could, um, so I didn't have to wait too long for them to dry. And unfortunately I might have to hit them with the hairdryer a little bit and that's annoying to listen to, I know, but it does speed up the drying. And so the turquoise one, I did a little technique that looked a little like barn board on the background and then I painted the pumpkin white so that it wouldn't take so many coats of the orange to cover. So I'm going to paint this background and show you how I did it. And then we're going to do the white for the pumpkin before the orange. Very simple. I just took, so I'm using just a couple turquoises. Now, if you just have a dark turquoise or one turquoise color, that's not a problem. Just mix them with white. I painted the lighter color on the background. And now I'm just taking a flat brush and I'm just going to streak kind of a dry brush technique, just streaking the paint up and down there. You can use an old ratty brush. You can just use a flat, pretty simple, pretty quick. Just a little bit of dark turquoise on there. And then I go and add a little white on top. I'm gonna to use the same brush. I'm just gonna wash it off and dry all that paint out of it. I take some paint off my brush. I don't want a lot of paint. I don't want a big uh, streak of white paint. I want it light. So I've applied the white paint to my flat, but I've taken most off on my paper towel and then I'm going to streak over it. And that way you'll see, I'd rather have you go super light and then go back and get it a little darker than put a big blob of paint on there. So if it's too light, you just add a little more white paint. It's as simple as that, especially for these little guys. It's a kind of a cool barn board look. Some of you that painted the um, spring bike with me, remember this technique for the bike. We did the kind of a turquoisey fence in the background. And then I just took a liner brush, a thin brush. Whenever I'm doing detail work or any lines or any fine work, I thin my paint down. So I'm taking my black paint, but I'm adding a good bit of water to that. And I'm just making a few little lines, very light, and it doesn't have to be a solid line or a straight line. You can start it, stop it, put the brush back down the pumpkins going on top. It doesn't really matter. Notice how crookedy my line is. We're not looking for perfection here. If it was um, perfect, it would be a photograph and we're making a painting. So what I did then is I just sketched on a little pumpkin shape and notice on the three, I made different shaped pumpkins a little bit. You don't want them all the same. Some could be squattier, a little taller. I meant to make this one more of a pear shape, but anyway, so I just drew on my pumpkin 
and then painted it white, like you'll see in this one, just so that we'd have a background that the orange will cover a little better. I know the orange is um, a little transparent, and we could paint the background around the pumpkin, but when I'm streaking those lines on, I like to go up and down pretty straight, and I don't want to curve around the pumpkin. This guy's getting to be a big, huge one, but that's okay. Okay, so then I just let that dry. This guy's already dry, so we can start in on him. These guys, I did this guy on the ivory, but it needed a little pizzazz, so I put a thin coat. Well, I didn't mean it for it to be thin, but the metallic gold is a little bit of a transparent paint. Let me pull it down so you can see the colors too. I just got a gold metallic. I'm just brushing it over the ivory. Because we have that ivory base, it's not gonna look really streaky. It's just gonna give a little sparkle. And I don't know, when we're using the leopard print here and um, the turquoise, somehow just gold worked. So it's just a thin coat of gold there. And that's all the background's gonna be for this one here. We'll let it dry, then we'll sketch a little pumpkin on. I'm gonna line these up so you can see where we're going. This guy is just a little ivory pumpkin. I tend to use a lot of primary colors in mix. As you can see here this morning, I have not done that. But colors that I do like on my palette that I don't usually mix is just an ivory or an antique white. I use it quite a bit, so I like to have that in the bottle. And with a little glob there, just a little clean water on my brush, we'll remove that. This will take a few coats to cover too, the ivory. So I'm gonna paint around whatever I can. And if things haven't dried, then we'll just quickly hit it with the hair dryer. Is everybody else um, thinking fall? I'm excited about painting fall and, and winter, but I really am not wishing the summer away because I do love summer best. Okay, let that dry, we'll put another coat after. This is dry, so I'm just taking just sort of a middle shade of orange and I'm gonna paint that little pumpkin in. I love that pump, I love that orange color on top of the turquoise. It really is a cool, um, they, they complement each other. Okay, again, I overshot my little guy there, but we don't worry about that when there's a mistake and the paint's still wet. A little clean water on your brush and you can just scoop that away. When we're painting in acrylics, it's just fun and whimsical. At least I paint really whimsical and colorful. I don't worry about little bits and pieces that uh, might look like they're, you know, a mistake or something. We can always touch them up if we need to. All right, so um, let me sketch on. It's a little tacky, but I can certainly sketch my pumpkin on here in the turk. That's going to be the turquoise one. And right now we're just base coating these colors on. I'm using a flat brush. I find that a little quicker and easier. Again, whatever brush you're comfortable with, if you're comfortable with a filbert, if you're comfortable outlining it with a round and then filling it in, that's okay too. I'd love to uh, hear about your fall projects too, or any questions. I will watch the comments here, so if you guys have any questions, um, put them in there. Even long after the video's over, I'll keep, com I'll keep coming back and um, answering those for you, or you can direct message me. Um, I'm at Tinker's Cart Art. I have a fun free group there called Learn to Paint with Cheryl, and we do lots of little projects and little tips and tricks if you are interested in that at any time. I varied the color of the stems. The green went well with these two. When I did the green on this little uh, turquoise guy, it didn't really work, so I did it brown. So let's just put our little stems in now, just because we can. And... I just freehand them on. They're a little wider at the end and they get a little thinner when they touch the top of the pumpkin. It's streaky, but that's okay because those little stems have that um, rigid kind of a look and the translucency of the paint sometimes lends it well to that. It just looks like it's a little shaded. So here we go. I, I will put another stem the same way here. You can make the shapes a little different if you want. This guy, I know it's dark on the black, but I'm going to put it on there anyway, just as a start on where to put, just a way to put it. Letting these dry still. So I think I might go ahead and do those tiny curly cues on the top. 
just like a little stylized pumpkin vine. Hi, Deb. I don't want to, I know, summer. I'm up in Maine. I'm in southern Maine right now. I'm in Wells. And I was going to pop on and do a beach scene, but I didn't have the painting here. And I have been um, dying to do some fall things, so that's why I did that. But I am trying to make uh, use of every good day we have. Today it's a little cloudy, so it's a good day for painting. Okay, I want to make sure you guys can see a little better, maybe. Okay, I have taken some of the gold paint. When I do these tiny lines, these little details or these little curly cues, again, it's something I want the paint thinner. I want it to be more like ink. I don't want it to drag, especially if your paint's been sitting on your palette. I add a really good bit of water to it. I'm using a little tiny fine brush here. And again, I'm just freehanding them. I am just gonna go and just do some curly cues. This gold is a little transparent. I may go over and do a little touch up on it if it needs to be a little darker, or you might just like the look of it the way it is. I'm gonna switch over to black to do the turquoise background. I've got some paint here I've already thinned down. See how it's really more like ink. And you could do these details with your paint markers. Remember, I do love the paint markers. Um, I use the Posca markers a lot. I just bought these Pintar. These are really fine tipped markers. They're paint inside. A Sharpie works too, but this looks more like paint when you apply it. You shake that paint up and you get a nice um, painted line look. And if you're not comfortable with little details or lettering, those guys are a godsend. So if you haven't tried them, you might want to try one or two colors in those. I'm not even thinking about how these are going. I am just doing these little curlies, guys. And the teal uh, pumpkin gets a little teal one. I'm going to use that dark teal. Again, I've already done one, so I've got the paint a little thinner right there. Oh, you guys, did I remove the camera so you're not even seeing me now? Hang on. Sorry about that. Let's see if that is better in one second. Oh, geez, now you're seeing my paint. I want to make sure. It's hard when the when I'm doing it on the phone like this because I can't really see what you're seeing, but I'll try to hold everything up in front of the camera for you, too. And move this guy over so you might be okay. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. Sorry about the little techie bits. You're seeing the, the, um, the finished ones really nicely, but not the ones I'm working on, so let me hold this up for you. And again, these little curly cues. I don't want to make you dizzy. You feel like you're on a roller coaster with me moving that camera around there. But you can see those little guys, right? And let's see. I am going to do something a little different on these than I did. When I painted these guys, I did the patterns on them and then the little dark lines. I think I'm going to do that a little different this time, and I'll show you as we go. I need another coat of this ivory. So let's do that. And I'm jumping around a little bit just because I'm waiting for certain elements, parts of the elements to dry. You could line a bunch of these up and do, you know, six at a time. And wouldn't they make great little gifts for your friends? Um, or wouldn't they be great? I just thought of this. At each place setting for Thanksgiving, you could have a little um, easel with one and you could put the name in the middle of the pumpkin. Or say you had three on your mantle together on your little easels and you put the happy fall y'all or some cute little grateful with a, like just a few letters on each one so versatile you can do so many things with these i'm happy i had these hanging around this morning because it just really popped into my head to do this all right I'm letting that dry a little bit one more coat on that orange one i'm going to add the details to the stems which are really not a lot while this is drying. Okay, so the stems. This guy is very dark, so I'm lightening him up a little. I am just taking a little bit of a lighter green. I'm just gonna brush over. That gives me a guide, my dark one there, but it gives me a guide. I'm just brushing over with some lighter green, just so you can see that a little better. I'm going to make on the um, outside edge here just a little heavier with that green. I'll give a little white highlight afterwards, as you can see, you know, a little white highlight after. Same with this guy. I'm going to just do a little bit of light green on one side. 
If you don't have a, tur a light green, a lime green like that, just add some yellow to your green and you will get a nice light shade. I just mixed up a little brown and some ivory to get a lighter brown. That's what I highlighted this brown stem with. Just a little bit. It's kind of like a tan color. A little, a little light bit. It's dark on one side that we'll leave. Okay, let us go to the turquoise guy because he's dry. To do the ribs, those little ribs in the middle that I've brought down a little straighter in, in the middle and then I curve out, I do that with watered down paint so it looks a little washy. So for the turquoise guy, I just used a dark, the dark turquoise really watered down. I'm using a round brush and I am just going to go I'm going to go kind of a little bit straighter in the middle, curve a little bit, very watered paint, curve a little bit. Now they look very stripy. Just rinse off your brush, dry it off. I'm going to use just the dry brush to blend that a little. Because the paint is so watery, I have time to soften that. So I'm softening that and it looks a little more like the ridge, um, the little rib um, ridge I'm looking for. I'm just softening it. So now doesn't it look a little more natural, a little more like a pumpkin rather than just three dark lines? And let me, I hate to do it to you, but I'm gonna hit these two guys with the hair dryer. So block your ears, it will only take a second. There, that wasn't so bad. Oh, Deb, you're right. The turquoise pumpkins probably did come along because of the um, the allergies. And it's a great idea. You know, you guys know about that on Halloween. You could put a turquoise pumpkin out on your step and then the kids that have allergies know that you have an allergen-free treat, which is fabulous. You could have some of each, actually. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to put my lines on the other guys. This uh, ivory-colored one is just getting the brown, really watering it down. Same technique, I'm gonna put them on really watery. And because it's watery, I have time to blend that and soften it. I mean, that's not bad looking, but I would like to, I'm rinsing off my brush again and just going to use the dry brush. And I'm softening towards the outside edge because it's darker in that little groove and now it's just a little softer on the edge. When I start to pick up too much of that paint, I just dry my brush off on my paper towel again. And on this side, it's the same thing. It's to the outside edge. I do a few techniques for my shading and my highlighting. One is kind of a washy technique like this, and sometimes I just do it one stroke on a brush, which I've um, demoed a few times. And sometimes I do a wet and wet blend. These are so tiny and just novelty kind of, we're not really worried about it being perfect. I'm making a dark orange. I'm taking like a burnt sienna and a brown here and I'm getting a darker color for this, the ribs on uh, this, I keep calling them ribs. They're probably not ribs. They're just little grooves or indents. And I'm just, again, thinning it down. Now, if you go onto your pumpkin and it doesn't show up and it's too light, like that is a bit light, you can always adjust the color. Lots of times you don't know if it's gonna work or not till you get it on the pumpkin. I mean, on your on your piece. Okay, so there, very stripey, right? What are we gonna do? We're gonna rinse our brush off and soften the outside. It's a little awkward working like this, but I want you to see it in the camera. So it might not look perfect, but you can see the technique. Feel free to turn those guys upside down, sideways, whatever you need to get at the bits that you need to. So, not the best um, wash, but you get the idea. It looks pumpkin-y, right? Okay, details. These are fun, that leopard skin, so easy. These are just little polka dots. So I just go back into my dark turquoise and I'm just gonna put dots on this pumpkin polka dots. I love polka dots. Hey, Betty. Thank you. These are, they turned out fun. I on, honestly, on a whim this morning, just painted them up and then thought, hey, you guys really like my little miniature um, ocean scene. So may, I thought I'd pop on to your group here and I appreciate you having me here. Um, whatever way to make 
polka dots for you is the easiest. A small brush, a big brush, outlining them first. This is a little big. That brush is a little big. I think I'll go to a little little one. It might be a little easier. Now, I'm doing these a little different. Like I said, these I painted the dots on first. This way with the little uh, ridged areas, I can almost like put a little half one there, make it look a little more real, like it's uh, the dots are on the shape of the pumpkin. So for instance, here you could have like a half a dot because the other half is turned over. It just looks a little bit more natural. Well, if a turquoise pumpkin with polka dots is natural in any way, probably not, but anyways. Okay. And then after this, when it dries, we just give it a little, um, some little highlights. We've got our shadows, we want some highlights. So that's our polka dot guy. I didn't know whether I liked it better with, just like this with the polka dots. Here I put little um, white strokes on the side. I'm kind of liking it like this, I think. I might do one this way and one that way. And these little guys, leopard skin um, is, fun to paint and it's simple. Don't get, don't look at it and think, get overwhelmed. It's so easy. Just two colors, a light brown. So what I did is I started with um, dark brown. It was too dark. So I have mixed some with my ivory or you could mix it with white and you're just going to get a lighter shade. They're really just blobs. They're really just weird shaped little blobs. Don't think about them too much. Some are little, some are bigger. I might throw a little, pull a little dark in there too. I'm just taking a little dark on my brush so I can have almost a couple shades. Not that you really will see it after. And so they're kind of, they're not really too roundy. They're just, I just sort of squiggling and making them a little, um, each a little unique shape. Some, like I said, are little. It could be just on the edge. Some could be peeking around the edge. Some could be big in the middle. Some here could be coming out of the little ribs. When we put the little black bits on them, you'll really see them a little more. It's as rough and abstract as that. It looks like it's got some sort of pumpkin disease, doesn't it? And then the black bits, they're not completely outlined in black. You're not outlining each little bit. It's almost like they're a little bit of a C shape sometimes. And then on the other side, there's a little bit of black. So it's almost like a little black on both sides. I wiggle my brush. I get it thinner and thicker because I, I, I'm going to try not to make them all the same. But they're basically kind of outlined in black, but we don't want to bring the outline around the whole Thing. I put it around maybe the top and then maybe a little C on the bottom, like a little U shape. The best bet is to not think about it. Just kind of put your mind somewhere else and just sort of randomly put little bits on there. Sometimes if you don't think about it too much or stress about it, it's a little more fun and your painting looks a little more fun. So that's as easy as that would be. Okay. Uh, like a little plaid, like a little... Uh, I guess you call it like a plaid, right? Stripe. Let me hit it with the hairdryer. I see it's a little wet. I don't want to drag that brown with me with my light colored stripe. I'm really on purpose, really watering down this color. I want to see through it a little bit. If you do your stripes a little see through and then let them dry and then go back the other way, you would get what is naturally in kind of a plaid with the little squares where they meet a little darker. Um, if this was a big painting or a big pumpkin and I was doing that, I might go back in and just make each little center square a little brighter because those two stripes have overlapped. On something this little, it doesn't really matter. And you're gonna see how much nicer this one's going to be than this one where I painted the stripes, the ribs over it. I happen to have this cool orangey yellow color which worked well for them. You could use any sort of a yellow. Yellow is so transparent. Remember, sometimes um, it's best just to add a little white to it just to make it a little more opaque. So if you have a color, translucent, really hard to um, get your, your whatever it is you're painting to cover, add a little white. It will really get the paint a little more opaque for you. Or in the case of my pumpkin, paint the object in white first. When it's dry, go back over with your yellow. I'll do that with when I'm painting a moon sometimes or a sun on a dark back, a moon on a dark background. 
You could use a very small um, flat brush for these little stripes. I did it with the round, but I also have some teeny. I bought this little set of brushes at Hobby Lobby, which is pretty cool. It's a whole set of them, and they've, they're little tiny handles, uh, but I like the idea that they were tiny. I needed, and it came like a whole set. You got like from this wide down to a little filbert. Uh, lots of detail brushes in that little set. I thought it was a pretty cool find. It's Master's Touch, which might be their brand. Okay, so I thinned down my paint that I'm going to use for my stripe. I've added a little white. What I'm going to do with this guy, though, I am going to make the lines a little curved to follow the shape of the pumpkin. Maybe something like this. It's always an experiment. So this is the second time I've done these and we're gonna try it this way this time. I think it's gonna look a little more natural than that one. I'm not crazy about that one. Okay, so we've got them going one way. And I do wanna let it dry a little so that I can do the uh, downward stripes. So let me annoy you with this noise one more time. It is handy though to be able to dry that quicker, especially if you're watching. I don't want to keep you hanging on here all day. You guys have things to do. Now, going down the pumpkin, there is no ridges, so it would be kind of, you're going to go right with, straight down there, maybe right that way, that way. Yeah, this looks much more natural. This almost looks like if it was one of those fabric pumpkins that was stuffed. There, I think I like that a lot better. What do you guys think? Yeah, way better, right? And if we've lost some of the, 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 the little um, ridges where the shadows are, we could go back in and just darken them up a tiny bit. I think that looks great. The only thing I did on those guys now was this guy add a little white, kind of a comma shape on that side of the stem. Same with this guy. Same with this guy. Just a little thing there. I don't know. I don't know about my dots here. I'm going to leave one plain. You guys can decide if you like it with the white little comma stroke or just the way it is. This guy, I might deepen in my little creases in a second. I think this one I'm going to call done. I did streak over a little white highlight if you like that look. And I did it with, again, just a flat brush. Just water on my brush. This is a little technique, that washi technique I was talking about. It's a little different than the whole stripe being uh, watery. I just water on my brush, tapped a little off. Tiny bit of white on the corner. I do always blend that first. And I don't want to catch any of these that are wet, but then I just took, see how light that white is going on and just sort of blending by itself because half the, most of the brush is water and just a little white on the tip, on the edge. I'm using the white edge towards the outside edge and I just am doing that. And maybe just a little highlight down the middle. I'm afraid that that's wet. I don't want to drag it down there, but you could. This is what I did on these guys. I just got a little white down the middle, just so the middle of those little ridges is a little brighter. Same thing here, just that little bit of white on the edge. When I run out of paint, I've still got enough water in the brush. I just tap a little of that off. And just a little highlight. If I want it down the middle, I'll do the same thing. Just a little lighter there. And it just gives it a little little something. And this guy I don't dare do yet because of all that black. And they're pretty well done, so I don't need to keep you while I dry this. I just take a little, this, side's, this side is, the left side is dry. Just a little bit more of that white. And I just give it a little highlight down the sides and then a little bit in the middle. And that's all there is to it. So what do you guys think? Um, like I said, you can buy the little packs of the easels too. And, you know, I don't know how you can see them from above, but, you know, they're very cute. You could do all sorts of things with them. Aren't they adorable? They're not expensive. I forget, there's like six in the pack for the, for the, for the um, canvas is five. I don't know why five for the easels, but cause that makes you buy another pack, I guess. But there they are all finished and, um, so I just wanted to pop on and say, 
and say, oh, sorry about me being upside down, and say, have a great day and thanks for watching me. Hey, Kit. Hey, Vicki and Noel. Thanks for watching. Just a cute little pumpkin thing for fall, even though it's summer. And I'm Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. I'd love it if you pop over and see what I have going on. And I do have that Learn with Cheryl, um, Learn to Paint with Cheryl Facebook group, which I could put in the comments if you'd like. Thank you. Have a great day. Appreciate you watching. Thank you.